One of the roles you have as a puppy parent is to manage and control almost every decision they make in these young stages. We practice management for a lot of reasons, but some of the big reasons are, when you have your dogs out of the crate and they're wandering around the house and you're off doing something else, there is so much trouble that your young puppy can get into. Another reason that we practice management and control is for advocating purposes. Your puppy is going to have moments where they show fear or insecurity or they're nervous and it could be of an object, of a person, another dog, a new environment. So you're going to have ways to manage your puppies in those moments to not reward them for negative decisions they may make. You're going to help them not react in a bad way where they potentially fear bite or where they dart or run away from whatever they are a little insecure about. The number one purpose of management and control really is just prevention of bad behaviors from forming or getting worse. Every time your puppies get away with doing something, they're learning it's allowed. Typically that's going to be pulling, jumping, barking, jumping on the counter, chasing the cat, nipping at the kids, stealing things off the ground. So when people come to us with their really young puppies, they always say, how do I stop these things from happening? In the early stages of our little baby puppy's life, I always tell people, manage and prevent, manage and prevent, manage and prevent. In formal training, behavior stuff is fixable easy. It's easy to correct pulling. It's simple to correct the mouthing and the nipping. Easy to teach leash manners. But all of those things become a little harder if during their puppy stages we consistently allow all of that to happen. So now the big question, how do I manage and control my young, out of control, immature puppy? You really have four easy ways to accomplish this. One is your leash. If you have a leash on your dog while they're either dragging it around the house or you're holding on to it, you can prevent a lot from happening. You can prevent your dog from running away. You can hold or step on the leash when your dog goes to chase after the kids or dart after the cat. You can even step on your leash when your dog goes to jump on someone to prevent them from actually getting their paws off the ground. My favorite management tool by far is the crate. The crate is your friend. Your dogs can't chase the kids, grab their clothes, attack the cat, bark out the window if they're in their crate. The crate is such a safe, easy way to manage your puppies to not get into trouble or into harm's way. Another way of taking control when things start to get out of control is what we call our seated position. When our dog starts to get crazy and they start to get nippy and bitey, we're gonna take immediate control by swinging them around, pushing their butt down and getting them in between our legs. In this seated position, you want to have control of them and not let them fight out of the position. Now, as you can see here, Frankie isn't fighting, so my hold doesn't have to be super tight. If our dogs start to fight us in this position and start to wiggle and squirm to get out of the position, my legs may tighten up, my hands may tighten up, my body may even lean in a little bit to help use my chest and my stomach to help control the fight backward. A side angle of that would look like this. So if my dog is not fighting, I can sit a little looser. I can hold my hands a little bit looser. And if all of a sudden fight, and wiggly-ness starts to get out of control, I can squeeze up my legs, squeeze up my arms, and lean in and use my stomach and my chest to help control. What you don't want to do is tower over and do this. This becomes an incredibly dominating position, can really stress a dog out, and it puts your face in a position to get nipped or bit. We recommend this position for two different reasons. One is just to get control. If you're out on a walk and someone says, oh my gosh, your puppy's so cute, may I pet your puppy? You can say yes. This is one of the ways that you can fall into the position to have control. You fall into the position, you let somebody come say hello, nice and calm and gentle, and you're in control of your puppy during that greeting. 
With you being in control of your puppy, you prevent them from jumping, nipping, lunging, twisting up around the ankles. So again, you're in control of that meet and greet. Every puppy gets that seven o'clock witching hour, right? They get the zoomies, they're running around the house, they're flying off the furniture. In those moments, most people let them happen, but you're allowing your dog to get out of control. And remember, one day you're going to want to make sure that you have the ability to control your dog. So when those moments happen, you can either pick up your leash and hold to control them, put them in their crate so that they're not getting away with being out of control or fall into your seated position. When our dogs get really super nippy and bitey, this is so common in young puppies. Every single one of them does it. Drop into your seated position and take control. When our dogs are nice and calm in that position and they're not fighting to get out and they're not biting to get out and they're not barking to get out and they're not crying to get out, tell them that you love how they're acting. The way that we communicate with dogs to tell them that we want them to do more of what they're doing is through reward or through praise. So for Frankie, I'm gonna tell him, good boy, very nice. I want to give nice, controlled, calm praise to tell him that I love what he's doing right now. He's being such a good puppy, so I want to communicate that to him. So now what do we do when our puppies don't sit so nice? The key in this situation is don't give in. When they put up fight, don't let them go. What you're teaching them is that their fight got them out of you being in control. They win. If you drop into this position when your puppies are already hyped up and already amped up, expect a lot of fight. If you're not in the right frame of mind or you don't have the patience at the moment to drop into that position and work through that fight, simply calmly put them in their crate. So what do we do when our dogs start crying? All I want you to do is sit and hold. What most people want to do is pet their dog and tell them it's okay. But remember that every time you are physically petting your dog and baby talking them, you're technically telling them, good dog, I want you to do more of what you're doing. So if you're loving on your dog and petting your dog while they're showing anxious signals, you're communicating anxiousness is good. That is not what we want. So now what do we do when our puppies start biting us? Most people do one common thing that can be super dangerous, which is, ow! They pull their hand away. They're very abrupt about it. Some people give a big scream, ouch! What your dog learns through consistent motion of teeth on skin, hand goes away. Teeth on skin, hand goes away. Teeth on skin, hand goes away is that their teeth are controlling your hand. This is how we start to develop aggression. At Happy Tails, we have a zero tolerance policy for teeth on skin. I don't care if it's gentle, innocent, just being playful. Teeth on human skin is never acceptable. What we don't want to do is pull our hand away and reward our dog. What I want you to do is offer a muzzle correction. Most puppies, their natural instinct is going to be to bite. Puppies bite mostly to initiate play because that's how they play, but sometimes they bite to try to control, make that hand go away. If your dogs put their teeth on your skin, what I want you to do is very calmly, but matter of factly, put your hand around their muzzle and say, no, it's a tiny little head shake. We are not squeezing tight. It's a firm hold, but not a squeeze. You're just controlling their mouth. You control their mouth. Their mouth does not control you. You control their mouth. Their mouth does not control you. This is the message we want to get through to our puppies that their mouth and their teeth do not control us. We're going to take control of them when they do that. So from a side angle, if my puppy goes to bite at me, put their teeth on skin, I'm gonna take my hand, put it around their muzzle and say, no, tiny head shake. I'm not going to scream at them. I'm not going to yell at them. I'm not going to get mad at them. It's literally a matter of fact, no. End of story.
health option to help you manage and control a dog of any size or any age or any temperament is utilizing a transitional leash. The transitional leash is essentially the seated position that never loses. Rather than utilizing your body and your hands to control their mouth and head, you're now utilizing a leash. The transitional leash is literally just a piece of string. If you're struggling with any management issues, any control issues, and especially if you're struggling with that seated position, talk to your trainer about utilizing the transitional leash. There are some disclaimers when it comes to the handling position. First, if you have physical limitations that don't allow you to drop into that position, that form of management may not be for you. So if you can't get them into that position, talk to your trainer about some other options, but it may not even be for you. The seated position is not necessarily something that we would recommend for young children. Depending on the age, they may not grasp why we're doing it. They may not understand the importance of controlling their puppy. And oftentimes they just don't have the strength. That goes for adults too. If you don't have the physical strength to actually restrain successfully without letting them win battles, don't do the position. We find that a lot of people are intimidated by their own puppies. Their teeth are sharp, their nails are strong, and their personalities can be bold. If you simply just don't have the confidence to drop into that position and take control and manage your puppies and correct their nipping or biting, don't do it. That's okay. If any of those situations apply to you or one of your family members, you still have your crate, your leash and collar or harness to manage, or your transitional leash to manage. So to wrap all of this up, remember that at this stage in the game, you are working on developing the relationship between you and your puppy. Ultimately, we want that relationship to be founded on mutual trust and mutual respect. But trust and respect have to be earned by both parties. Just because you're a big adult does not mean that your puppies will automatically respect you. Another common misconception is that puppies will just grow out of their puppyhood and out of their bad behaviors. That is not true. Puppies grow into bad behaviors. Puppies get bigger, they get stronger they get more confident. It will use all of that to their advantage to manipulate and control you if you let them. That is why it is so important to manage and control your puppies as much as possible to prevent things from getting out of control. As always with any struggles, please let your Happy Tails trainer know if you are fighting any kind of battle or need any kind of extra assistance. <laughs>